uh, configuration. So uh, some of the things that, uh, that we spoke about was that they want to try to make a platform for building distributed platforms on top of. Now, as, uh, as Solomon mentioned earlier, uh, with some of my work with Hadoop, this has quite a, this has some interest for me, where I would like to have Hadoop clusters running on Docker in, a, in an easy way, and without incurring the cost of, uh, of virtual machines. And so, uh, so this is a good step towards that, uh, that direction. So, another, so at the moment they have their production image down to about 99 megs. They're pushing to work that uh, that lower. Uh, they said that they're able to boot in under uh, in under a second as well. So, so literally, you turn it on, your system's ready. You start running running your Docker commands. So, from an enter enterprise perspective, with uh, having to spin up new systems, you can, there's definitely a lot of value in that area. Uh, they they have a team right now. So actually established a company to build this, mm -hmm. and th on their team is uh, the person who is responsible for OpenSUSE. He wrote UDev, and he also is responsible for shipping uh, kernel releases. So uh, so he's able to pull in a lot of expertise plus additional support from uh, from other areas of the of the Linux community in order to try to in order to try to make this happen. Um, so. Uh, they're pretty a friend, friendly bunch. If you go to um, freenode uh, core OS, uh, I'm pretty sure you can en engage in some pretty good uh, discussions with them. They have on their website the, uh, an alpha sign-up sheet, so eventually they're, they'll provide uh, the ability to actually to start working on this. So they're not at the state where they can, where you can work on it just yet, but they do have a GitHub uh, repo. So if you go to github.com slash core OS, you can see the work that's been done. I don't know what state it's in at the moment, so. I, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you want to try to get a running, that they'll pro they'll help you out in order to get that initial uh, that initial run if you want to if, if you want to start working on it. Um, so the second thing that I wanted to talk about was a little bit about orchestration. Uh, let me switch the screen share to another to another section. So. One of the things with orchestration, move to the very top. Sorry, this is going to be the uh, the uh, cheapest slideshow that you've seen. I, I wrote this <laughs> on an iPad uh, before this, and I had this particular idea where uh, we have these uh, we have these systems where we want to orchestrate multiple uh, multiple nodes and their configurations. So. So there's this concept called a uh, blackboard. Uh, it's an architecture, uh, architectural pattern where you write to a blackboard what information other other systems that are distributed at their own convenience can look at the blackboard, figure out what's going on, add to the blackboard data, make modifications, and so one of the uh, one of the, one of the ideas that came up when, from CoreOS is that they've created a distributed hash table crossed with a crossed with a blackboard. So you have you have the ability to perform atomic modifications of, of configuration data, which so so the idea in this particular case is that the the bigger boxes on the bottom are additional are physical systems with Docker nodes where the, the configuration is stored within the uh, within the blackboard. So the idea would be you say is a system would say or an administrator administrator would say I need some feature I need feature X. And I need some constraints. Constraints could be memory constraints. They could be distribution constraints. Uh, Ubuntu versus something else, uh, and or maybe constraints based upon the um, constraints based upon what applications are already on that system. Like maybe you want to run MapReduce, and you want to run your MapReduce clients on the same system that already have uh, H, uh, the Hadoop file system nodes. So that way you get uh, locality. Uh, and so a system, let's say this is system three, says I volunteer to promit to provide feature X, and it posts that to the blackboard, and then its responsibility would be to grab whatever configuration it, it needs from the blackboard, spin it, spin it, use that information, basically its lifecycle information, to spin itself up, and and basically it adds itself to the volunteer list. So these are these will be like a list of like. Where the, where the volunteer list says, I need four nodes to do this, and then nodes will sign up based, if they meet the constraints in order to provide that particular, that particular functionality. So I think we can build a system that 
as similar to uh, what you saw previously with Maestro, but designed specifically for distributed um, for distributed infrastructures. So my intention is I'm going to try to build this, uh, and and if anyone would like to help, uh, that would be I would be really uh, really appreciated. So. Uh, the, one of the first workflows that I'm going to work with on this is getting the Hadoop workflow uh, working because I think the Hadoop workflow is complicated enough where if we get that running then it's reasonable to think that we can also get Mongo running or various other distributed, uh, various other distributed systems. So uh, come talk to me afterwards if, uh, if you're interested and uh, we'll see about exchanging information and seeing what we need to do in order to get started. So that's it for now. Can you redone your contact Oh, sure. Uh, let me let me share it. Um, okay, let me share. So, from scratch. Okay, so my contact information is at counts at um, my.cmu.edu. Awesome. <coughs> So you can contact me there, or I'm also on free nodes as fcouts, or github.com slash fcouts. So. What, what exactly are you building that's not etcd already? What's that? Etcd. The oh, so etcd is the is basically like Zookeeper. It keeps configuration yeah. information, but it doesn't actually go off and spawn uh, systems create configuration, the actual configuration itself. So... Uh, I, I could be wrong about that. Uh, part yeah, of yeah, part yeah. of it is uh, to part of the plan is to evaluate what it what is uh, what does it provide and if it already provides everything we need, then we're done and then we abort the project. But uh, my understanding of it from yeah, what yeah, they mentioned yeah. is that it's only it, it is only a distributed hash table that stores configuration. So the, the, am I am I right in that, that I'm guessing that one of the Results of this project would be uh, based on a TD configuration. A bunch of Docker containers would be fired up in the right place. Right, so you modify the uh, configuration, oh, yeah. Yeah, the other systems that. will readily go ahead and fire and fire up. So they'll so there'll, there'll be a, uh, a process that is uh, that is monitoring this, so most likely a Docker container that is monitoring this and basically attaching it. And part of it is I don't, uh, what I don't want to do is I don't want to tie it to the core OS repository. I want it, I want it to, to maintain separate. So if you want to run it on, on an Ubuntu host, a CentOS host, or whatever, whatever a system, you know, it, the requirement is Docker. And, uh, the, abil and the EDCD library itself, uh, the ability for it to, to communicate with other, with other nodes. It, you, you described, um, like a, a container coming up <clears throat> and sort of announcing its capabilities to this right. this DHT. I mean, there's a there's a wide spectrum of what that could look like. From right. one end, just a container saying like, "Hey, I'm a Postgres 92 server," right. and the other end, you have like like Wizdl, right? Like right. where where in that continuum are you? Do you think that's going to live? So, I think it's going to depend on the developer in terms of who's of who's creating. So the so the idea the idea that I was thinking of was uh, to give a bit more clarity was to was it gets similar to a cross between like how storm works where you publish a topology up so you would pub you would create a a basically a finite state automata that specifies the life cycle saying that you move in order to add a node here are the set of steps you have to follow in order to to establish that node if you want to deprovision a node here's a set of steps you have to follow to properly deprovision those nodes and then as you change the configuration of the system then the, the nodes will intelligently or to some degree intelligently uh, work work things out so so the the actual complexity is pushed towards the towards the graph to to some degree. So there's so, so there's so that's probably going to be one of the more complex area is figuring out how that particular graph looks. What is the right level of uh, of abstraction? But yeah, I agree because it's sort of like what pushing out like say we're we're going to provide HTTP. Uh, I was I was thinking more in a sense like I have a service that provides HTTP this particular website or this particular type of database. And uh, and then pushes pushes that out as opposed to I prov I provide a single like or I provide a HTTP server or a WSDL or so on. Uh, so 
this to me sounds like a scheduler. Right. Um, have you looked at uh, Mesos or read the Omega paper? So I have taken a look at uh, at the Mesos. Uh, that that is a potential uh, opportunity, poten uh, potential area as well. So um, I want, in terms of Mesos though, uh, so um, I correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, my understanding was that the ecosystem that it depends on is quite uh, is relatively large, and so I would try to make this thing as lean as possible as well. Um, I could be wrong, and I I'm, I'm going to investigate. Well, what's available f uh, first in order before before I like dive in, but you know, but I but I want to but I want to seriously consider. Uh, I, I want to consider what's available and figure out from from there. So like, if if it turns out that there's a project that already does this to to some degree, or that we could extend out, maybe we extend out Mesos a little bit and then we're done, then fantastic. So the end result is I, there's an end result that I want. Uh, if it turns out that Mesos fits in very nicely with that, over, then I'll definitely go with that particular approach. Um, so the, I, there are three things. One, um, Mesos is, uh, like, I was under the impression it was, like, on the JVM because it right. came out on Twitter, but it's not. It's actually written in C++. Um, it's also not a scheduler. It's a framework for schedulers, which is really right. cool. So you can implement your own scheduler that does your own logic. Um, but it does do the whole like announcing of um, resources available to the scheduler, so it has that infrastructure there. Um, but then what's interesting is that um, you know it's based on Google's board, but now they're doing Omega, and Omega is more or less um, similar, except it's not message passing. It's actually more like your architecture, where there's a common uh, state of the cluster okay. um, that everybody sort of reports to and then they all kind of fight over resources but they all know what those resources are as opposed right. to like getting offers from various things um, and so the Omega paper is also probably worth reading too okay, well, I'll but go ahead I'm thinking about this that. a lot too for Flynn so. yeah and I mean part of part of what I was looking at from a, from a design perspective was I wanted to make something that is uh, that is not reliable on a single on a single node. I want to be able to deprovision nodes or upgrade systems over time. Uh, so, but yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take a look at those particular papers. And that's part of the idea that I was thinking of was to have systems basically fight fight over uh, fight over resources. So, a couple examples uh, is if uh, if you've worked within a continuous integration environment, uh, you've seen nodes where you'll have a capability saying I provide Java or I provide. Uh, I provide Windows or so on, and then it looks for a node that meets those particular capabilities. So I was thinking of something similar, but except where the where the resolving is done at the client level, and the res and the attributes could be dynamic. Like if if you know a particular system or a particular database takes five gigs of memory to properly run, and you have sixteen gigs worth of uh, of memory available, then you know that if you only have three left of available memory, you don't want to stick it onto that particular system. So that system will automatically opt itself out. Of course, like that's going to be a bit difficult in some cases to, to figure out, but uh, just the basic, uh, the basic idea is to try to work out a set of uh, capabilities. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a look and at those. Actually, this areas. overlaps a lot with service discovery when you yeah. factor in metadata for services, because you can model a host as a service and right. then have metadata saying, here are my resources. Yeah, and, and usually like you have like a static configuration, and then you have dynamic. Like, what is the yep. what does the real world look like? So it's like, so it'll be like static information published. Uh, maybe the potential to even pin certain nodes down. You say this particular node has this flag on it, which says it will only be used for this particular feature or this particular system. So, but uh, yeah, so so I want to I want to see if we can build something like that for 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 Docker. So I think that if we can get that down, and if we can get that down really well. Then we have the. It'll. I think that we can. That we can provide something that would benefit the, uh, the community at large. So. Okay. Well, thank you.